To get started creating a self and peer review assignment in Blackboard, we recommend creating a content area on your course menu just for those peer review assignments. Once you have an empty content area for your peer review assignments or navigating to the weekly folder or assignments folder where you'd like to display this assignment, you'll simply go to assessments and then select self and peer assessment. You have the option of importing um, Blackboard tests in the form of a zip file. However, for this example, we're going to show how to create a new self and peer assessment. The first part is to name your assignment. Once you've named your assessment, in the instructions you want to be very clear to students about how many times they'll be returning to this link and what they'll be doing. In my instructions I've let them know that during the submission dates they can upload a document containing their case study and that they will receive 50 points just for uploading their document. In the question two, they'll have one paragraph of reflection on the development of their case study. During the evaluation dates, they will return to this link to view classmates' uh, responses. I'll set up criteria so that students can provide feedback and score the student's question on that 50-point scale. The third time students will enter this link is after the evaluation date has done, they'll be able to see the results and feedback of their, fear, of their peers. Below is the submission dates. These dates will dictate when students will be able to submit to the questions that you're going to create. For this, it's standard about uh, a week for the submission deadlines, but you can use the calendar and the clock to change the date and times where students will be able to make their first submission. Then are a set of dates where students will be able to return for a second time and view their peers' responses. This date is also generically set up for one week, but is completely modifiable through the calendar and uh, time selection menu. Below are some options. Would you like students to evaluate anonymously? I'm going to say no. Would you like students to evaluate themselves? Potentially for a different assignment, but I'm going to select no. And I definitely want the evaluation results to be shown to my students. I'm going to have students evaluate to others and not including themselves. Under options, um, the assessment is available, but if you wanted to only display this between a certain date range, you can. Be careful using these and make sure that they align with your uh, course schedule and due dates. Now that you've created the assessment, you're going to create questions for students to respond to in their initial submission. In this first question, I really just want students to upload their paper. Upload your case study. Students will also have this full text editor here, these three rows. It may look like just one, but they can expand this to attach files here with the paper clip, but they'll also be presented with a button on the bottom to browse and upload from their computer. You can provide a model response for what you would want students to uh, respond to this question if it wasn't just uploading a paper. I'm going to submit this and now I have my first question. For this case study, uh, I did have two questions and so let me go ahead and create a second question. That second question was provide a reflection. For this, they don't really need to uh, upload a paper. They can just respond in the submission box. If your students feel more comfortable writing their reflections or items in a Word document, as you saw from that first question, that is definitely possible. Now that I have my two questions set up for this assessment, I need to add criteria. Using the chevron next to the question names, click for more options and select criteria. In the criteria area, you can create your own criteria or use the default word count criteria. For this example, I'm not concerned about word count criteria, but if I was, I would probably add a third question to this assessment. When I click on Create Criteria, I'm provided with a box where I can explain what I want students to do. I'm going to ask students to assign full points if their peers submitted the paper, but also provide feedback. 
for your peer and review uh, assessments, you may have a little bit more um, explanations or instructions for students to, um, to complete. Here, I'm going to make the question worth 50 points, and I'm going to ask students to give all or nothing. I do want to make sure I allow feedback to learners so students can write in feedback to their peers. When you're done, go ahead and select Submit. I'm going to press OK. It's allowing me to add additional criteria, which you definitely can. So if you had a paper that students were uploading and you had a variety of questions you wanted students to answer um, based on that one um, item, question, or paper, you could continue creating multiple criteria. So for this criteria, um, you could get as granule as, was there a thesis statement? and assign different points for that. Let's go ahead and find that OK button to go back to our list of questions. Now I'm going to set the criteria on question two. I have to click Create Criteria again. I'm going to set the points for this uh, criteria and um, allow students to assign zero points if their peers did not enter in a reflection. So now I've set up my um, peer review and I'm going to press OK to go back to my questions and then OK again to come back to these options. When you're coming back to edit the peer review, you can change the questions in the assessment canvas, edit the dates and availability and evaluation op, uh, options and properties, or you can export this assessment if you wanted to create the same peer review assessment in another class. I'm going to press OK. And here I am, this is what's presented to students. And you can see students are given the submission dates automatically and as well as the evaluation dates. The biggest thing for instructors to do is to let students know once the evaluation date has, has passed, they can return to this link for a third time to view the feedback from their peers. When students are presented with a peer review assignment, they are given the dates for submission and evaluation. From the student view, students can simply click on the name of the peer review assignment or the view complete assessment during the dates for submission or evaluation. During submission, students are prompted with the questions you set up to answer. Students simply click on the questions and respond to your prompts. In this example, students are supposed to browse their computer and attach a file. Students can simply look for their file and upload it to the question. They can also add a variety of text, videos, anything that the text editor allows uh, for that question. The second question is asking students to type a reflection. When students are done submitting the questions, they're presented with their questions again and can go back and review and edit them up until the end of the submission date. When the evaluation dates are enabled, students are able to return to the peer review assignment and see the evaluations they have to complete. For this example, the student can see their own submission here as well as one of their students, user one. Students simply select on their peer's name and are presented with their student's submission, the other student's submission. You can see here there's two questions. Students can download the paper that their students upload and then under criteria, allocate the full points for the question as well as provide feedback. Students then should select save and next question to go to the next question, which is the reflection. Here, students can allocate points again and provide feedback. They click on submit once they're done. Students will complete all the names here listed or per the instructions you've provided. 
They can press OK to exit this area. When the evaluation time period has ended, students can return to the same peer review assignment link to see their results. In this example, the instructor asked five different questions. So students can navigate amongst their questions and scroll down to see the criteria and the responses their peers left them. Students can navigate between the criteria for each question by selecting the number. To navigate to the next question, students can click on the questions in the top of this module. You can see that students will be able to see their submission, uh, criteria if any, and then feedback from their peers. Students can also score based on the points you set up for each question.